If you've watched any cyclocross race over the last five years, then you notice that bunny hopping has become a prerequisite for the riders that are racing. And you might be thinking, yeah, that's great, but how the heck am I ever gonna bunny hop? Well, today's video is gonna get you in the game. So the first thing that I teach at my cyclocross camps when I'm telling people how to bunny hop is to pull their front wheel up, get their weight back, and just pull the front wheel up. Simply just being able to get in the zone and get that front wheel off the ground just a little bit is the first step in being able to bunny hop. So with the front wheel still on the ground, the next thing that I tell everyone to do is to get their rear wheel off the ground. And that looks like this, just pulling up on the wheel getting it off the ground. So eventually you can combine the front and the rear wheel. The next thing that you wanna be able to do after a lot of practice on those first two bits is be able to do the front as one and then the rear as one. And then all of this comes back to timing. You wanna make sure that when you're going over an obstacle for the first time that you get the timing right. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So for the next step, there isn't a lot of investment on your part. I went down to my local hardware store, I got four pieces of rebar steel, I got my hammer that I had for a long time, and I walked into the woods and I pulled out two small logs. I'm gonna take the rebar and I'm gonna put it in the ground in front of each of these logs to hold them in place so that when I practice going over the barriers with that technique that I just taught you, the log doesn't roll all over my yard. So once you get your logs set up, you do your timing, you get the front wheel over, then the rear wheel over, you're not slamming the rear wheel. The nice thing about logs is that they're round and you won't dent the rim. I really, really like that. That's why I prefer to use logs if possible and they're really generally easy to find. So I always say, start really low and work your way up. Next up is a traditional two by four barrier. So whether you're using a two by four as your first plank that you jump after you get through the logs or you get to this two by eight or two by 10 or two by 12, all the way up to 16 inches, which is the UCI's height for a race barrier. What is the difference between this and a log? It's big. This is much sharper on the edges and your ability to pinch flat or to smash your rim is very, very high. So I recommend thorn proof tubes, yes, thorn proof tubes, you've probably never ridden with them because the ride quality is absolutely horrendous. This tube has never flatted. I've had it since the 10th grade. I'm actually not joking. My mom gave me these so that I'd be safe out on the roads, not flatting and having to switch flats. These tubes are very, very thick, but they're great for going in your tires to be able to jump barriers because they literally won't flat and you won't smash your rim and you can keep practicing and practicing and practicing. I'd also recommend not using a brand new pair of lightweight carbon tubular wheels on your first foray into jumping barriers. So if you're able to set up a barrier like I have here in front of me, this is pretty traditional. This doesn't take a ton of carpentry work, although you should have someone that knows what they're doing to make the process a lot easier. This is a traditional two by eight that you can buy at any hardware store. Then we've got another two by four and another one, which gets us up to 16 inches, which is the UCI's height for barriers. And as you can see, these just slide right in. So you can add and take them away based on the group that you have that's out there training. So lastly, again, make sure that you go slow. Every time I see someone go into the barriers after just a little bit of practice going really fast, it has never ended well. It's straight into the ground and it's not pretty for anybody. So recapping, you need to make sure that you've got good tires, no new brand new carbon rims. You wanna have thick tubes so that it prevents those pinches and those dents. All that stuff makes a big difference. And you wanna practice, practice, practice. Because if you get into a race situation, being able to implement this technique will save you a ton of time. And let's, let's, be, let's be honest, a ton of style points are going your way if you can execute this in a race from your friends. So, whether you're a road racer or a cyclocrosser, learning how to bunny hop is a super important skill. On the road, road furniture out in the middle of nowhere, you sometimes need to pull up on the bars and get over it. It's really good. And cross, well, everything that I just said. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, 
leave a comment below. If you want to check out other cyclocross videos, check out over here. And if you want to subscribe to GCN, click right there.